Hello friends. I thought it might be interesting to see what the head of the weir looks like from the coxswain seat. It's a 45 minute race uh, for these boats, but I've cut it down to nine and a half minutes. Uh, my name is Frank Townsend. I'm the program director at Cohasset Maritime Institute. And if you're interested in rowing with us, come check us out, rowcmi.org. We try to get anyone on the water who is interested. We can teach you how to row in uh, just a couple of sessions, and we have rowers of all ages and uh, all skill levels in our club. So this is one of our CMI Mainville fours approaching the starting line on the Weir River in between Hingham and Hull. That's the windmill you see on your way into Hull and we are heading down the Weir River towards George Washington Boulevard. Uh, this is a head style race, so the boats start uh, 30 seconds apart with the faster boats starting towards the back of the pack. And at this point we're about five or six minutes into the race and starting to pass some of the boats that started ahead of us. There on the left is Steve Brown, who is a CMI member and a friend of the club. And as we approach the bridge, we're also approaching another one of our youth crews. Uh, by the way, we have about 150 adult members and probably 50 youth rowers in the club. And in this race, we had um, three fours, so 12 youth rowers and uh, another three fours um, with adult rowers in the race. Uh, the boat that we're about to pass there has youth rowers Aiden Tiriaki, Oshin Rowan, Nick Hoadley, and Finbar Brisbane. And in the boat that we are looking at, you see Teddy Richardson in the stroke seat, behind him Christian Bungie, and then Shannon Grady in two-seat, and Elena Kane in the bow seat. Here, a little further down the race, we're passing the Windrose, which is a Boston uh, rowing gig, and now approaching more CMI members, Craig and Susan in the sliding seat double, passing out of the Weir River now, and into the World's End area of Hingham with Steamboat Wharf on the right. Uh, not all of our adult rowers enjoy racing. Uh, many of them do. Some of our adults come out uh, just to row with us recreationally twice a week. Some try to be involved in races. Almost all of our youth uh, get excited about racing. And here we are as uh, we pass World's End, uh, battling with this boat that started 30 seconds behind us. And you can see they've already caught us about 10, 15 minutes into the race. That was ultimately uh, the winning boat. That's James Donahue, Issa Murray, Sam Seavey, and Noah McDowell rowing in the Joseph Antoine. And we're pushing pretty hard here to try to hold them off. And uh, it took them five or six minutes to get past us, uh, but they did. Ultimately, that boat was the fastest overall elapsed time in the race. They finished in uh, 43 minutes and 24 seconds. And we finished about 90 seconds behind them at uh, 45 minutes and one second. These were the two fastest boats in the race. Our, uh, our Mainville Fours are some of the fastest uh, coastal rowing boats on the water. 
uh, and we were that day, our kids enjoy that competitive advantage of um, having these nice fast hulls. Uh, but they also want to make sure, if possible, that they have the fastest overall finish time and fastest in their class as well. So, uh, very competitive kids here. You can see we row at a relatively lower stroke rate, um, but these kids are pulling pretty hard, working, uh, working harder than it looks. You'll see at the end how exhausted they were. Uh, now in that shot, you can just see us passing around Sunset Point and heading for Bumpkin Island on the left there. And as we get to this point in the race, we're starting to pass some of the six oar gigs. There's uh, the Dharma Voyager on the right from Westport, Mass. On the left, you can see uh, Mike Cushing, South Shore, Ocean Rowing Staple. And as we get out into the bay here, uh, we're rowing straight into the wind. The water's pretty flat. The conditions are, are nice. It's, it's cool, uh, but not cold. <clears throat> but this was definitely uh, a pretty tough headwind. And at this point, we're about halfway through the race, but the, uh, the fun half is about to begin as we have to cross Hull Bay into the wind for about 10-15 more minutes and passing the last couple of faster gigs here as we get through into the final portion of the race. Give them a little wave here and try to get the kids psyched up for this last push. Uh, they want to have the fastest overall time the fastest elapsed time. They also want to be the first to cross the finish line. So in order to do that, we're going to have to pass all the rest of these boats uh, before we get across to Pemberton. And so the motivation here is to try to get through these last three or four boats. There's at this point, there's five boats ahead of us. You can see one on the left, two on the right there. That six oar gig on the right is uh, probably the, the come boating gig from um, Belfast, Maine. Always very fast and uh, generally the first, the first six oar gig to, uh, to cross the line. And uh, beyond them, you can see Andrew Carpenter in the single on the right there. Uh, he was third place overall or fourth, and uh, I shout him out because uh, we were calling back and forth to each other here. He was uh, giving us some good-natured encouragement uh, while insisting that he did not want to be passed by us. So here we are approaching the finish line, full power here. Uh, there were two boats ahead of us. We never quite passed that uh, uh, fixed seat wooden workboat dory. That's Jeff and Rich. Those guys row incredibly fast. They started uh, well ahead of us. We beat them by 15 minutes on elapsed time. Uh, but we couldn't beat them across the line. And uh, here you see us loading the boat onto the trailer. <clears throat> Get a nice smile from uh, Andrew Hoadley. Uh, CMI alum and current rower at Bowdoin. A lot of our youth kids will continue to row in college or Cox. You can see John Liffman there. And shout out Jean Townsend. Thanks everyone.